third parties and relationships. As in all negotiation, using third parties can help, but this cannot be perceived as manipulative in any way, or you risk hurting the relationship. Be upfront with the other person if we are going to consult someone else for their valued opinion. Just tell the other person that it's part of your information collection process. Bernadette Finikan wanted to run a road race in New York City for Thanksgiving Day. My controlling mother, Pat, as Bernadette put it, wanted everyone at her house all day on Thanksgiving. First, Bernadette asked her brother-in-law. He was completely on her side, definitely not interested in sitting around and eating all day. Bernadette passed this information to her mother and said she wanted to find out what others in the family would think of her running a race in the morning to ensure that the whole family was okay with it. It was presented in such a way that her mother didn't feel offended. Bernadette's father, Tom, it turned out, wanted to play golf. Her sister, Kathleen, had something to do at her own house earlier in the day. The grandson, Craig and Jack, however, were happy to spend the day with Bernadette's mom, their grandmom. Dinner could be set for later when everyone was finished with their other activities. Bernadette, a financing manager for IBM, was able to meet her goals with her mom without record. And it was the first time ever her mother actually thought this was a great process, building a coalition, framing, fighting interests, and preparation working. Bernadette said, people often ask me how these tools can be used in emotionally wrought family situation. Well, this was an example. Transactional relationships are those that have no obvious longer term element. As you might, as you can imagine, you, they are far weaker than those created by feelings or mutual benefits. Clearly, one should try to make the transaction bigger and the relationship longer when it adds value. Still many business relationships are transactional. So it's important to see how one can get more from these. Typically, transactional relationships include arm's length agreement. They include agreement between people who don't know each other well, often in marketplace by sell situation. They also include a situation where at least one party doesn't want to show favoritism such as with the government or a major company as a buyer. They also include the situations where money appears to be the only item of importance, commodity sales, financing deals. Some cultural settings have more of a transactional atmosphere than others. Often societies then use law instead of relationships to bind people together are more transactional. The farther one gets from feelings in a relationship, the less committed, to pe committed people are to the relationship. Fear, including trust, are much stronger levels 
that context. So I would be careful in relying on structural elements such as context or other incentives to be strong enough to sustain a relationship by themselves. They are okay when times are good, but when times are bad, people have a tendency to break them. As shown earlier, a human connection, even in a transaction, is your best strategy. Whether each with you directly or third party, Walterlin was an emergency room doctor in Philadelphia. Your situations are quite transactional. Medical staff focuses on efficient operation. As your lives are often at stake, an older patient who did not need emergency care kept insisting on sharing his life story. Dr. Lin said, after some hours, the staff tried to keep him out of the ER. The patient became aggressive. Dr. Lin realized that the staff was frustrated and emotional. He suggested that they take a break from this patient and go back to their duties. He would handle it. Then he put himself mentally in the shoes of the patient. The doctor discovered that the patient just wanted a new regular doctor, but couldn't get an appointment for six months. Dr. Lin scored the doctor in front of the patient and got an appointment in two weeks. The patient left the ER within 30 minutes. He thanked me profusely, Dr. Lin said. He said neither side, staff or patient, was able to solve the problem by themselves. More dispassionate, Dr. Lin focused on a relationship by articulating the needs of each side and getting a solution quickly. Mediation in relationships. You will continually find that people important to you in your life will not be able to solve their own problems. But if more than one person at a time can solve a problem between them, either professional or personal, in that case, you may well have to solve their problems as your mediator, someone in between them. For example, a disagreement between two other departments about who should work on your project, or a family dispute over vacation plans. So I thought it would be useful to outline some important tools for mediation. Contrary to what many people believe, a mediator must never take sides. You are not a judge or a referee. If you are perceived by even one side to be taking sides, you lose all your credibility. One of the parties will accuse you of being unfair. A mediator is a facilitator who has no power to decide anything. It's your goal to help the others reach an agreement. Even if you think one party is right, it's not your role to be their advocate. You can ask questions, you can ask about standards, but you can't take sides. As a mediator, you are actually the confidant of each side. They will each tell you 
things a car does if they trust you. You can share this information with the other party until the person disclosing the information to you wants you to. But getting this additional information may help you get at the root cause of the problem. Maybe the parties are still stinging about something that happened a year ago. To gain these confidences, you need to meet with each of the parties separately, probably more than once. You need to walk them through the problem-solving models, ask a question about interests and standards, and take breaks when things get difficult. If you do it right, people will start turning to you as a problem solver. Tatiana to see parents were on the verge of a separate. They kept rehearsing things that happened 25 years ago, said to Tatiana, a U.S. pharmaceuticals manager now stationed in Greece. They were each angry and stubborn. She spoke to each separately. To understand their perceptions, then she asked each separately to imagine the perceptions of the other. They each wanted respect and understanding from the other. They started to talk again. Ultimately, the marriage was saved. Meet briefly with both parties together, if possible, to set ground rules, and then meet separately with each, flip a coin if necessary to decide the other, the order, the order. That way, they can share perspectives with you in private. Always separate the parties, the length of time, depending on the state of the relationship. The worse the relationship, the more separation. Once they are together at any side of travel, separate again, discuss their different perceptions. If an agreement is better, lead them to it using negotiation tools, because you will become the center of the relationship between the parties. You must stay involved after an agreement is reached. Until they can deal with each other on their own, you need to wean them from you. If the meditation isn't going well, or you find that a party is being unfair, don't take a side. You will hurt your reputation with the draw, or threaten to with the draw. If the parties don't follow the process you have outlined, you are the keeper of the process, so make sure you clearly establish how you will do it, standards, and so forth. Those around you will love you for it. End of relationship. Any chapter on negotiating relationships must include when it is not useful to negotiate a relationship at least not without third parties. One of my students had a friend whose boyfriend repeatedly beat her. He kept promising to go to couples therapy. This is not a subject for negotiation by the victim. Physical abuse is against the law in most countries. It too often leads to injury or even death. The student should urge her friend to move out and seek professional help. A family doctor internecides a starting point. The friend should then give the boyfriend one chance to see the therapist and no more chances if another beating occurs. The girlfriend should not move back until he is rehabilitated by some standards of agreement by the parties. If this doesn't work, 
The abused person needs a third party immediately. The internet has many sites from third parties who can help. Virtually, all of my former students I contacted and who have been involved in abusive or failed personal relationship did not want their names in this book. The situation seemed too emotional and stigmatizing. But here are some general guidelines they provided. Put some distance between you and the cause of the problem, whether at home or at work. Physical space increases clarity of thought. Find a professional, an emotional third party for some perspective. Do research on the issue you face. Value the other party to take the emotional temperature down. Provide an emotional payment, such as just keeping a recovering alcoholic company. Use standards, particularly in a job situation, to find out what is fair. Prepare, write down questions and issues to discuss with the other party or third parties. Take breaks whenever you feel emotion coming on. You will never make up for yesterday. Try to inflict pain on the other side just causes them to fight back. If they try this with you, a third party needs to explain this to them. A former student, now an executive in Singapore, was divorcing a sometimes violent husband who also wanted most of the assets. She invited a fair-minded friend of the husband to a meeting to meditate, mediate an agreement. The the friend was able to keep the husband in check. A calm, structured approach leads to a better solution, even for breakups of short of extreme. Jeff Furman, now the executive director of business and legal affairs for Comcast in Los Angeles, once wanted to change his relationship with a young woman from romantic to friendship when he was a law student. He said the best thing was being honest about his feelings while getting home. If they start getting emotional, let them be emotional. As the course teaches, he said, appreciate their concern. At the same time, pair them your limits. Today, Jeff uses the same tools in negotiating talent deals regularly. As for the young woman, she and he remain friends. Trust and relationship. The basis for any relationship is trust. That means if you lie to the other party, you are endangering the entire relationship. It also means that you will enhance the relationship if you are straightforward with bad news. This is counterintuitive for many people, but in fact, people know the world is not perfect. What they hate is when people cover things up or lie to them. Chris Kim, vice president of New York Investment Bank, wanted to change the date of a reunion trip with her best friends from college. The trip had been planned for six months. She was back up front about it with her best friend in the group. I said she was my best friend in the whole world and how I really wanted 
to go on the trip, Carissa said, but that the timing was turning out to be really bad. We noticed that Grace buried her friend at the same time that she gave bad news. She also made a commitment to going on another trip in the near future. And she asked about the options. Then might be so that everyone won't be happy with the result. Her friend said others in the party had begun to express some doubts about the date too. So they all decided to reschedule. Grace did have this negotiation five months before the trip was to take place. It would have been more serious if Grace waited until a week before the trip. However, it would have been better to mention a potential problem from the first moment she thought of it. There's a really good lesson here in expressing your concerns right away, Grace said. I knew from the beginning that the date might be a problem. If I had said that the whole situation could have been avoided. This is good advice if you have concern. Express them up front, holding them back, especially in a relationship, just makes things worse. The problem doesn't go away. To end the chapter, here are two difficult family negotiations requiring multiple tools and a very keen sense of other people's feelings. The successful negotiation below could easily have turned out poorly if not done right. They start by identifying the process that the parties might use to make tough choices and not jeopardize the relationship. The process sh should seem fair to the parties. It should be clear and simple. It should be done in advance before things get muddied up with the details and conflict. Tamara Frajic was an attorney in New York City. She wanted to cancel her promised attendance at her annual family reunion in Europe. She had made a commitment to attend, and the whole family was coming. But she was burned out from work and had more work yet to do. She was afraid, however, that any excuse, including work, would be viewed as putting the family second. The first thing Tamara did was find the person in the family, most likely to support her. In this case, it was her older sister. Her oldest, oldest sister had missed several family events and had the most experience in the subject. Her sister reminded Tamara of their father's mood. Work comes first. Tamara had forgotten that what a standard. Who was the next person most likely to ever die? Tamara's mother. Tamara telephoned her mother and said now how tall she was because of her desire to attend and yet she was exhausted. Now it is true her mother could have said Come on, we all make you feel bad, Tamara said. However, that she would be no fun for anyone. She would be jet-lagged, stressed, feeling work calls, tired and grumpy. Tamara asked her mother if it was really worth the trip for her 
on the Dejan Sakura Transit. Tamara promised to call during the reunion. She even set up telephone video conferencing. At the same time, Tamara expressed her extreme disappointment in not attending. Tamara's mother agreed with her and said she should stay home for when she could and find another time to visit. Next, Tamara called each and every person who was coming to the reunion and went through the same negotiation. People felt very that Tamara went out of her way to call. It only took a few minutes to call. She used different tools for each person. Standards for her father, empathy with her mother, alliances with her sister. Her family members began sending text messages saying, you are doing the right things. Her relationships were preserved. Camera, now working in Paris, said she should have started the negotiations earlier rather than a week before the event. She could have been more incremental and better prepared. Clearly, though, she used the right kind of tools. The process she used is the hallmark of the best negotiator. Husband, wives often have a hard time with newborn babies. The parents get exhausted. Arguments often fray. Bisma, Hakka, a Latin student, had an eight-month old who woke up every two hours. His wife was exhausted from dealing with this. Bisma wanted to sleep in the guest room during the week in order to be fresh for his glasses. His wife was unhappy about this. My wife does not want to be the only one who is sleep deprived, he said. This was surely an emotional situation. The notion that misery loves your company. First, Bisma told his wife that he knew she had been working very hard with the baby and had every right to insist that I continue to sleep in the same room. This was an emotional payment necessary for his wife to even want to listen to him. He next noted they had a great relationship. I asked her how we can get sanity back in our lives, she reported. He suggested that instead of both of them being exhausted together, at least for a while, both of them could be less exhausted separately. This must said that if he got a good night's sleep in a separate room, he would be less tired than he came home from work. Then he would care for the baby for several hours while she had some time off to sleep was just to unwind she away. You might say, gee, that's obvious. Well, it's not so obvious to millions of people who fight over such things. The point is that virtually every relationship situation can fail due to emotion or lack of skills or can succeed due to a structured and systematic use of negotiation tools. Remember, every relationship in your life, except in your family, began as your transaction. The more you look for relationship, in, even in transactional situation, the more possibility that at least some of them will turn into long-term relationship. And you will get more with the cabbage presented above. 
look around. Time and energy permitting, start conversation with people. Look in their eyes. Over a lifetime, you will be rewarded and you will get more.